nice to see you again. We met this morning already. Um, we are at Seattle AI Investor Summit and Showcase here in beautiful Seattle, and we are really excited to be here. So, you are Emily. Tell us about yourself, Emily. Thank you. Yeah, great to see you again, Mandy. Yeah, so I am a lawyer. I'm a partner in an international law firm. I'm very excited about the AI space. It's um, bringing a lot of interesting challenges, but also huge opportunities for our clients. Um, we really focus on what companies are doing across the world, entering new markets, and helping them to navigate a lot of the uh, local laws and, and the issues that they need to think about. So, super exciting time. Yes, and there are a lot of laws to think about related to this, right? There are. There yeah. Are. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone is talking a lot about the new EU, AI, but um, there's a ton of stuff already out there that's really super relevant because we're talking about data at the end of the day. That means IP, it means privacy, it means a lot of existing laws that are impacted. So um, part of it is kind of helping to navigate existing legal frameworks to help companies achieve what they want to do. Yeah, absolutely. So how are the EU laws going to affect us in the United States today? Um, they are going to have a massive impact yeah. uh, in a couple of ways. So firstly, there's the kind of Brussels effect, which is, you know, the, the EU tends to be a bit of a first mover in terms of regulating um, technologies and, and issues. That's one thing. But the EU AI Act has extra territorial effect. So you don't have to be a company based in the EU to be covered by this law. If you're creating, um, developing AI systems and you're selling them into the EU, then you're going to be, you're going to have to comply. Yeah. So it's a really, um, it's a big deal and companies need to be thinking about how it applies to I've been tracking this. <laughs> so yeah, no, it, it's interesting. It's taken a while to get to where we are. Um, as it relates to what we're accomplishing here, I, 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 but I, I definitely would be interested to find out more, um, especially related to, so I'm just going to roll with it, because I'm quite fascinated by what the EU is doing to protect children, Yeah, and how platforms here are going to have to kind of change around, um, in, because of that regulation, right? um, this is not me necessarily advocating for it, I can appreciate that here in the US we are not putting as many guardrails around it because we want to see how the innovation continues and we want to be the most innovative country but at the same time you know we we denied I believe we denied CODA um, are you familiar with CODA it's um, it's the child it, I don't remember what the acronym is but it's basically for, for child protection right and, and so I would be here and, and I know that the EU has like done CODA and then so right. um, how we would be creating our platforms to, to uh, acknowledge that regulation so that right. it, it can be the same everywhere yeah. um, as a law by culture. Right. It's here too. Right. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of the initiatives that the, the, the EU and the, and the UK are implementing mm -hmm. are, are, are going to have a similar extraterritorial effect mm -hmm. because um, a lot of it is actually makes you know a lot of sense um, in terms of looking at the kind of broader impact of on children and certain technologies but also um, they, those laws do have like you know that, that extra territorial impact too in terms of how they cover companies. Regulators in, in the EU and UK are very passionate about um, addressing risks um, for vulnerable groups and uh, particularly sensitive types of data and health issues. But children's data is a really big issue. We've already seen, for example, that the UK's um, children's code is now being transposed into a similar law in, in California. Okay. So we can see that there's a real um, correlation between what is happening in that region and then other parts of the US. So it's definitely an area that um, 
it's going to evolve quite rapidly and there's a lot of really interesting technology solutions that are, are being evolving to help deal with things like age verification and identity. True age verification, mm -hmm. not, exactly. I hope. Exactly. Not, I, yes, I say I'm 13, but I'm actually not, and even is 13 the right age? Right, you know? right. Yeah. There's, there's things like that, there's ways that you can present things differently, there's ways that you can understand a bit more about the sophistication of your or the age of your audience through certain um, things that are happening, like, you know, monitoring and so on and so forth. So there's, there's, there's um, legal solutions and legal requirements, there's technology solutions, um, and ultimately, you know, it's, I think it's the direction of travel is to do more for governments to do more around protecting children online. Yeah. And so we're just seeing a different um, approach. I think in the EU and UK, which is kind of more um, broader applicability as opposed to a kind of state by state approach in the US. Yeah. So, um, and that's the difficult thing for companies to navigate because they have to decide yeah. what's the standard that I want to meet. That's right. And how do I adjust my approach per region? Per country, per state, yes. Um, how does it impact by actually um, make available to people in those areas? Sure, sure. So and how cool. easy is it for us to to make it different for each one of them? Right. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm glad that they'll, they'll have a baseline. Um, you know, uh, like I said, this, this stuff is, I, I've been following it very closely. So yeah. That's, that's the interview. You guys got to learn some amazing things that are happening in tech that are going to make it so much better for um, young people and vulnerable people and, you know, protecting people's privacy is paramount, really, in, in today's society. So that's, that's what I have to say. And I am the founder of a startup, and so I am building the Upwork for the commercial real estate and construction industries. Um, so that's, I, I'm here to learn what um, investors are looking for and who I want to talk to about it. And so I'm really excited about that. What, did, what, did you, what has been your like, main takeaway from today? Relationships still matter. Right. Yeah. Seeing people in person, engaging with them, talking about things that matter to them, that matter to society, that you know matter to us as a community, is still going to get you much further than a random message on LinkedIn. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, there's no way that we can, I would never have met you about it. That's right. Because you can't, you can be intentional about connections, but you can't be serendipitous. That's right. And that's what we have to do. Yes, and I love serendipitous. Right. Um, I'll tell you something kind of serendipitous. So I was looking for a CTO. Um, and I have been a recruiter in the commercial real estate and construction space for 13 years. So this I can very easily vet and find people. And um, I had reached out to about 20 individuals who I thought would be a good fit for my CTO. And I heard back from a few, and the, the the one that I was most excited about wasn't because I was like, what are your technical skills? Because I really don't know how to get that yet. Um, but she seemed like she had the right stuff, and then she said, my husband works for Expedia, and we're moving to Seattle in March. And she's from India, and she's currently working in London, um, and, and she wants to be a part of what Thing. And so I was like, wow, she's the one. Like, and it felt very serendipitous. Like she's fallen into place. Yes. Right. In a way that you could have predicted. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. So, where are you going to go to dinner with Hubs tonight? Well, we are staying at the wonderful Edgewater okay. Hotel. So, um, an old favorite from many years ago. So, I think we'll, we'll have some dinner there. Yeah, I'm going to do that too. We, a few years ago, this is probably five or six years ago, we were having dinner 
there and we looked out the window and we actually saw two walkers just out the window. Yeah. Just it was, it was wonderful. So it, there's, I, there's, no, there's not many views like that. I know. And, this and, is and, a promotional video. Which was our Greater Seattle partners and the Edge Walker. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Nice to be here. Yeah. To it's been, yes. Likewise. <laughs> Wonderful to interview each other. Yes. Exactly. All right. So long. <laughs>